Here's my version of problem one from the online homework. The first thing that I need to decide is, is, is this a question about proportions or is this a question about means? Well, it's clear that this one is a question about proportions. As you can see, we're talking about P's here. So the next thing to do is to look at the three distribution diagram associated with a proportion problem. The random variable is a yes, no question. I don't know what it is that we're measuring in this particular case, but we're, we want to count up the number of yeses divided by the total population, and that's going to be the proportion. As you can see, in this problem, there are two opinions. One opinion is that the proportion is 81%. The other opinion is that the proportion is greater than 81%. The problem states that we look at a sample of 100 subjects. So that's our sample size. That's what n is going to be. Of that 100, 84 are successes, or 84 are saying yes. I'm going to use the variable r uh, to represent uh, the number of successes. I could have used S, except I'm using S to stand for the sample standard deviation. So now what we're thinking about is the distribution of all sample proportions of size 100. So we look at every single possible sample that we could take from, from, from this original population. We look at the proportion of yeses in each one of those samples, and then we look at the distribution of those sample proportions. Under the right assumptions, this distribution of sample proportions will be normally distributed. We had already observed in this problem that, that the null hypothesis is claiming that the proportion is 81%, and the alternative hypothesis is claiming that the uh, proportion is, is significantly greater than 81%. In a hypothesis test, we assume that the null hypothesis is true and then calculate some probabilities based on that. So assuming that this is what P is, we know that the distribution of the sample proportions is going to be the proportion of the original population. So this is going to be that P. In this case, that's 81%. Further, we know that the standard deviation of this distribution of sample proportions is the square root of p times q. p is the probability of success here and q is the probability of failure. So since p is 0.81, then q in, in our case is going to be uh, 0.19 because 0.81 and 0.19 add up to 100%. Uh, so, in proportions, the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample proportions is going to be this amount. So that's all of the given information in this problem. So let's, uh, fo let's focus our attention for a few minutes on uh, the rest of the three distribution diagram. From our sample of 100, we had 84 successes. Now that means that 84 divided by 100 is the proportion in our sample. We know then that our particular sample ends up about here somewhere. Our p hat is going to be 0 0.84. I can calculate that uh, proportion just in my head. The third distribution in the three distribution diagram for proportions is a standard normal distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. It translates this uh, distribution to a standard normal distribution so the mean gets transferred to zero, the standard deviation gets transferred to one, and this value right here gets transferred to a z value. So we'll want to find that particular z value. Z values are always found in exactly the same way. We want to find the z value of this p hat. 
So the z value is of p hat is going to be p hat minus the mean of this distribution. So it'll be p hat minus p, which in this three distribution diagram, p is really this p from uh, the, the first distribution, all divided by this standard deviation. Sometimes this is called a standard error. So in simplicity, I'll write standard error here for that. Okay, z value of a statistic is going to be that statistic minus the mean of the distribution it's coming from divided by the standard deviation of that distribution. That's the z value that we're looking for in, in this homework problem. But once that z value is found, then what we want to do, because this is an upper tailed test, we want to find the probability of being that z value or something bigger. If that value is less than or equal to whatever alpha is, in our problem alpha was not stated, and when that happens we'll just assume that the alpha is 5%. So if we were completing this entire hypothesis test, then we would want to find that area and uh, and look to see if that area is greater than alpha, in which case we would fail to reject the null hypothesis because this phenomenon would not be unusual. On the other hand, if that area is less than, than whatever alpha is, 5% in our case, then we would reject the null hypothesis and therefore the sample is supporting the alternative hypothesis. In, in our problem, we are just simply asked to find the z value. We don't have to do the entire test. They're just seeing if we know how, with the information that's available, to find the z value. Let's write an, an R script to do that job. So let's begin our script by entering the given information. Now, of course, these hashtag comments you don't need to put in your script. I'm just putting them there. To remind me of what's happening and to help you see what I'm looking at. So we were given the null hypothesis. So in other words, we know what p is. I'm going to call that p0 to remind me that it's coming from the null hypothesis. We were also given the sample size, which is 100. We were given that the number of successes in the sample was 84. From that given information, we're going to calculate some data. p hat is r divided by n. Now looking at our three distribution diagram, we need to be able to find what the standard error is, what the, distri what the standard deviation is of the distribution of the sample proportions. So we need to know what q is. We already know what p is, but we need to know what q is where p is the, prob is the probability of success, q is the probability of failure, and it's always 1 minus p. Again, I'm putting these zeros on here because I'm reminding myself that these are really coming from the null hypothesis. So now I have enough information to cap calculate this standard error. I know what p is, what q is, and what n is. The standard error will be the square root of p times q, the square root of p times q divided by n. Really that formula. So now I know that standard error and I'll be able to calculate z. So we now have enough information to calculate what z is. The z is just calculated by this formula. So we'll put that into our, our code. And then if we execute the code, we get a z value that's a little less than uh, 3%. Now that was all that was asked for in, in the particular problem that we had. We can also complete the test. That is, we were testing information about this uh, hypothesis test. So what we want to do is find this area that's above z. 
Because this is a standard normal curve, it's very easy for us to find the area below z. The area below z is simply p norm of z, but we need the area above z. So that's 1 minus the p norm of z. I'm storing that in, a, in a, an object called p value. And I'd like R to tell me what that is, so let's execute that. Oops, I got an error. Notice the typo error. Okay, I corrected the spelling error on p norm. I asked it to tell me what z is and what the p value is. The z value, the answer to our question in the homework, is uh, 0 0.33, so on. The p value is really quite high in this case. It's uh, 48 uh, percent. So we would fail to reject the null hypothesis in this particular case. Okay, that's the idea. Hope it helps.